The current inflation in the U.S. is between 8 and 12 percent per year, according to John Williams. This means that about 50 percent of your savings, pensions, and income have been stolen over the past five years and transferred to a ruling cabal of thieves, crooks, scumbags, and degenerates of this world. Everything is rigged, and the Western world is now built on endemic lies as far as the eye can see. Truth and morality have been purged from America by the vilest and evil people on Earth. The fake government statistics and the high stock market prices convince the sheeple that everything is okay. Even the consumer inflation data is bollocks. They consider useless discretionary crap, like biotech and tobacco. I don't buy biotech or tobacco. I buy food and pay for a residence. You know the things that are increasing much faster than the official rate of inflation. That should be the only thing in the core CPI, food, and houses. Inflation is everywhere if you just bother to look. My health care is up 9% this year alone. It is eating away at my take-home pay and making me and my family poorer. Grocery prices are also rising each year. And my state and local taxes keep going up. On and on, I could go. If they're trying to hide it, they aren't doing a very good job at the grocery stores and gas stations. By the way, there are only 30 corporation stocks that make up the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and they ain't very industrial anymore. Life is full of facts we don't know or have simply forgotten. In a comment, a writer recently encouraged the curious to search hyperinflation during the Weimar Republic. Some of the details I discovered were surprising. Germany had come out of the First World War with most of its industrial power intact, still, inflation suddenly destroyed the currency. This dovetails with some of my thoughts on currency trading today. It confirmed that inflation can stem from a growing lack of faith in a currency, or all currencies, rather than just a lack of available goods. As inflation takes root the goods available for sale often contracts as sellers retreat from the market awaiting higher prices which creates a self-feeding loop. It was amazing how quickly inflation took root in Germany during the 1920s. Consider how fast it could happen now that we live in an age of instant communication which allows ideas and expectations to rapidly spread. In today's world, many people have developed a false belief in financial stability because of claims by central bankers they have controlled inflation to where the economy will grow at a managed pace. History shows the German currency was relatively stable at about 60 marks per US dollar during the first half of 1921. By November 1921 it had dropped to approximately 330 marks per US dollar. The demands in May 1921 for reparations in gold or foreign currency to be paid in annual installments of 2 billion gold marks plus 26% of the value of Germany's exports was crushing. The first payment was paid when due in June 1921. That was the beginning of an increasingly rapid devaluation of the mark. The total reparations demanded was 132 billion gold marks which were far more than the total German gold and foreign exchange. The drop in the second half of 1921 was just the start of a dire trend. In August 1921, Germany began to buy foreign currency with marks, this increased the decline, the lower the mark sank in international markets, the more marks were required to buy the foreign currency demanded by the Reparations Commission. During the first half of 1922, the mark stabilized at about 320 marks per dollar because of international reparations conferences, including one organized by U.S. investment banker J.P. Morgan. After these meetings produced no workable solution, the inflation shifted to hyperinflation and the mark fell to 8,000 marks per dollar by December 1922. This means the cost of living index increased more than 15 times in just six months. A video on this channel explored how the manageable inflation goal of 2% has become the holy grail of central bankers but argued this target central banks have deemed optimum is not economically valid. This target is based only on their opinion of what conditions will best allow the economy to flourish. Claims by the central banks that deflation drives or allows their QE policy to remain as central to their ability to stimulate. The moment inflation begins to take root and become solidly entrenched to where it becomes a self-feeding loop the flexibility of central bank policy is lost. What makes this debate over future inflation very relevant is that the average American has witnessed in the last 30 years, a growing gap between government reporting of inflation, as measured by the Consumer Price Index CPI, and the actual cost of living. 
What the central bankers have conveniently brushed aside is that the formula that generates the numbers governments pump out was skewed in the 1990s when political Washington moved to change the nature of the CPI in an effort to reduce the federal deficit so nobody in Congress would have to register a vote that would harm the image of Social Security. For proof as to the real cost of inflation just look at the surging replacement cost resulting from recent storms and natural disasters. I contend that inflation would be much greater if more money had flowed into tangible goods rather than paper investments and promises over the last several decades. The move of wealth into intangible assets has masked the rate at which central banks have debased our currency. This means it might be wise not to become too trusting or complacent to the idea that inflation can be contained at 2% especially while deficits explode, debt builds, and central banks continue to stimulate the economy by printing money or that the economy looks good for the next year or so. In the past, I have put forth the theory that inflation could rule the day even if central banks are unable to keep the wheels on the bus and the economy suddenly collapses which is in truth beyond their control. If inflation does not become the flavor of the day it is also very possible the future may unleash, its sister, the powerful force known as stagflation. This is also a threat to the average citizen and will devastate those improperly invested for its arrival. The mindset of investors and of the money people often shifts into overdrive when opportunities for speculation arise. The distortion caused by easy money from Federal Reserve policy coupled with political and social compassion for affordable housing, medical care, has obvious implications as debt and promises continue to rise. Most economists agree the central banks are not in a position to tighten the money supply at this time. Remember, so many of the things we invest in such as pensions and stocks are merely paper promises but hard assets are rare. While I'm not predicting hyperinflation the threat of inflation or stagflation is being understated. A word of caution, while hyperinflation does not often occur, when it hits, and the speed at which it can hit is a massive game-changer that can make bonds and many other investments nearly worthless. The time will come when the US dollar will collapse and be worth no more than the scrap and or collection value of its cotton paper and dross coins. If the dollar collapses, foreign investors and central banks will stop demanding dollars. U.S. bond prices will fall, or U.S. interest rates will rise. Mortgage and credit card rates will soar, sending the U.S. economy back into recession. The U.S. government will respond by opening the monetary floodgates, printing as many paper dollars as necessary to keep the economy from collapsing. This surge in supply will send the value of the dollar through the floor. Prices for most things will skyrocket, and people whose life savings are in cash, bank, or dollar-denominated bonds will be wiped out. A collapse of the dollar will lead to a Mad Max-style anarchy scenario. Anything could happen, and sometimes countries experience unrest during a currency collapse and debt crisis. It will lead to a total collapse of society. The effect of devalued dollar reserves on foreign countries is less clear and probably depends on each country. In case of a major systemic collapse, your best bet is probably to go for rural areas. Food shortage and urban unrest are the two things you are trying to avoid. Plenty of countries have lots of land. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.